I'm excited uh, this morning to continue in this season of God's word for his people. If your dials are tuned into what God is saying you will hear in your life, I promise you will be transformed in this season. That this year, 2022, will be a memorable year for you. It'll be a year of breakthrough. Yes, go ahead and praise God. The transformation will begin with the renewing of our minds. Hallelujah. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so God in this season is speaking to our minds. I believe God wants to speak to our minds and our hearts. This series of messages from the Lord is to speak to your mind and hopefully transform your thinking. That it will get into your mind, work the way to the core of your soul where your emotion becomes engulfed and your will is aligned with the process of what God is doing in this season. I'm excited about getting into the word of the Lord and I'm excited about next week's finale because next week I'll preach the fourth segment. Amen. The number four represent earth. And I believe that God is going to release at the end of next week's sermon an extraordinary force in the earth. Uh, some of you are still catching up. This is why I got to preach number three. Amen. Those of you who didn't have an excitement in your soul, you could barely get your hand to move. This is why number three is here. Because the Lord said, don't leave them behind, Pastor Steve. Take your time. Take your time. Don't leave them behind. And so we want to welcome those of you who are tuned in around the world. Amen. I got a word. I will continue this teaching. We have been talking about vision and you. Vision and you. And we say in Proverbs... 29 verse number 18 where there is no vision where there is no revelation the people in one translation it says they move around wildly there is nothing that is worse than a person without the vision a person without a vision will get up every day and have no idea what to do with the day. Going from minute to minute without a purpose. Blowing around like a shaft in the wind. Hoping for some sort of discovery to happen. Without a vision without revelation the people cast off restraint to their detriment the bible says without the vision they perish but blessed is the one who heeds wisdom and instructions god has given me instruction for his people a person without a vision will be a slave to their reality. Without a vision, brothers and sisters, you will remain the same way that you are. And nothing will change apart from the fact that you will get older and weaker and closer to death. You become a slave to your present reality. 
But I'm here to tell you today that you're not incapable. The enemy will want you to think that you're incapable, but you're not incapable. Because you have the power of Christ living in you and all things are made possible through Christ. You're not incapable. You're not unqualified. Who God calls, he qualifies. You're not unqualified. Your qualification did not happen in the earth. Your qualification took place when God divinely destined you. When you came, you came wired. You came qualified. God had already qualified you, giving you what you needed on day one. So brothers and sisters, I'm telling you today that you have everything that you need. Everything that you need to get started on your vision, you have right now. Everything that you need to get started, you have right now. Everything you need to get off the ground, God has already given it to you. If I'm wrong about that, then that vision that you have didn't come from God. Did you hear what I said? If that statement I just made is wrong in your mind, then this vision you have didn't come from God. There's some of you who have visions that didn't come from God. That's why vision must start with God. We said in our first series of lessons that vision rides on the voice of God. Some of you have visions that you made up in your head. You got it out of a magazine, somewhere, some, some influence came upon you and you have a vision that you, that you made up in your head, somewhere. While some of you have visions that came from your friend. My friend is doing this, so I'm going to do this. There's a lot of money on this. My girlfriend says she's making 35 an hour. Uh, my friend said he's making 65 an hour. He's starting with 120 years. Starting. So you think that's your vision? Others of you listening to me got your vision from your mama or your papa. From the day you were born, they had a vision for you. You got to be a lawyer, doctor, or engineer. And when they introduced you, they said, this is my doctor, this is my, this is my doctor's son. And it's the parent's vision. What other people dictated or expected from them. But you're supposed to not live somebody else's vision. But you ought to hear from God yourself. He is speaking if you're listening. So the prophet said, I wait to hear. I wait to hear in the midst of my confusion. I wait to hear. God wants to speak his revelation into your heart and into your spirit. Vision must therefore then be valid. Vision must be valid. And vision is valid when vision comes from God. Brothers and sisters, when you work a vision that did not come from God, it will come to void. If you work a vision that did not come from God, it will come to void. 
And many of you have been working visions that didn't come from God. And you wonder why every time you work something, it always somehow comes to naught. No matter how you push, no matter time you spend, no matter effort you, you put into it, eventually it comes to naught. Because you've been working a vision that is void. You've been working a vision that is from some other source other than God. What then is vision, Pastor Steve? Let me reiterate for you. That vision is your purpose that God puts in your heart. Vision is your purpose that God put in your heart. It is unique to you. And God will equip you to do what he purposed you to do. God will equip you to do what he purposed for you to do. He will equip you and purpose you to do what he wants you to do. So we said as a result that vision becomes your practical guide. It becomes your practical guide to create your plan. Now that you have a vision, you know exactly what to do. What steps should I take? What are the things that need to be on the plan to get done? Because I have a vision, and now that I have a vision, it helps me to create a plan. It helps you in setting your goals, your daily goals, your weekly goals, your monthly goals. When you have a vision, it helps you in evaluation of your life. When you have a vision, you are able to look at yourself and see where you are right now and to think about where you should be or where you could be you evaluate your success and your failure because you have a vision and you can bounce yourself up against your vision it provides for you focus I always say to a friend a young friend of mine we're talking they were talking about struggling school. I said, tell me about how you spend your time. Tell me about how you spend your time. Because some of you have got to understand that time is your greatest gift. And there's some people who can get it in five minutes, but some of you need five hours. But just because it takes me five hours don't mean I can't get it. So how do you spend your time? See, your vision will keep you focused. It gives you motivation. You wake up in the morning. What drives you every day? What drives you every day? What is it that drives what, what When you wake up in the morning, what, what drives you? What, what make you get up and get, get ready and head to church and to pray? What, what is driving you? What is it that makes you get up and put your clothes on and get out of the house? Vision gives you motivation. It gives you discipline. Discipline don't mean that you don't want to do something else. Discipline means I want to do that thing, but I still get up and do the right thing. You know, some people will get up and go to work for the boss. You know why? Because if they don't go to work, they will be put on discipline, if not fired. So rain or shine, even when they're sick unto death, they're still going to work. But if they're doing something for themselves, they lay down and waste time. And wonder why their business don't prosper. And I'm saying, if you're good enough for somebody to hire you, and to pay you a portion of what you earn them.
Y'all didn't hear what I just said. Every one of you who has a job, you paid the boss before he pays you. He already value you. When they interview you, they value you. They value your experience, your speed, your skill set. And they say, oh, this is good investment. Let's hire this one. She can make me some real money. And give her a paycheck. And, 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 and give her a little insurance. And give her enough to keep her working for me for the rest of her life. Because I know how much her rent costs. I know how much her car costs. And she, she, I'm going to pay her enough to keep her coming to work every day. For if she miss one week. So she becomes a slave. And we become slaves unto other people's vision and dreams. And God has given you, but you refuse to get up and work hard for yours. And to fulfill the thing that God has placed in your spirit. Visions means availability. Some of you have so many things that God has given to you to do. But you're not available to accomplish the task. The issue is not that God did not put something in you. The issue is not because you're disqualified or unqualified. That's not what it is. The issue is that you refuse to become available to do it. See, vision requires time. And some of you have sold your time. You sell your time. Every day. You wake up, you sell your time. How much is it worth? I'll take 13 an hour, boss. Oh, thank you, Mr. Biden. 15 is a much better price for my time. Sell your time. $20, $25. I got time. I'm counting down. Some of you can do the math how much you're going to earn in your lifetime because you know your price. How much an hour? Sell your time. If you work your vision and stay with it, you'll watch it grow. Amen. The problem is everybody wants everything overnight and it's vision don't happen overnight. Vision takes work and determination. Here's what I want to do. Some of you looking at the chaos on the altar. If you're smart, some of you will say to us, Pastor, that looked like a Roman numbering. It does, doesn't it? And if it is the Roman numbering, praise be to God, it will be the number six. Somebody say six. Six is a special number. Because on the sixth day, God created an extraordinary creation. He said it is good. He created with intelligence and insights and focus. And he placed in it vision. I'm talking about on the sixth day of creation, God created man. He created man. I'm telling you that you're no ordinary creation. I'm excited to report to you today that there is more to you than you think. God has wired you for things that are greater. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you I can, where I come from. I'm not supposed to be standing here doing this. Maybe pastor wants to say something different. Maybe he says, this is a V. I wonder what it means. And maybe it means that you're vexed. Maybe it means that you're upset because you get up every single day and go to a job that you don't like doing. Maybe you're vexed because you work for a company that treats you like a number. 
Maybe you're vexed because you work for somebody as a supervisor who knows how to taunt your day and to make your day miserable. If you're vexed today, you're in a good place, somebody. I believe that many of you are, are, are stuck and you're intimidated because you are fearful. How am I going to do it? I need my job. I can't survive without it. I hate it, but I need it. See, that's a problem that most of us have been trained only to work for other people. They send us to school to get an education so we can work for other people. Nobody sends us to school to tell you, go to school and learn how to start your own company and do it. They say, go, go to school, get a good job. And here you are, stuck and you know you're not happy right now you're upset and I recommend to you brothers and sisters that what you need if you are vexed and if you're intimidated you need an S in your life somebody said pastor give me an S what you need is an S and this S means to see, somebody said to see. See, watch me, watch me, write this down. Vision is a view of the end while you're still at the beginning. Woo! Write it down, y'all need a vision is a view of your end while you're at the beginning. Somebody need to see. The reason why you haven't done anything is because you haven't been able to see. Come on, somebody. My brothers and sisters, can I trouble you to tell you that vision is a preview of your finished future. Vision allows you to see what I'm going to be, where I'm going to live, what I'm going to drive, what kind of man I'm going to marry. Vision allows me to see my future even before I get it it's a preview I know how the story ends because God has given me a vision somebody Woo! please note carefully that I did not say that the S stands for sight it doesn't stand for sight but it stands for seeing because vision is about seeing vision must be seen the bible tells us in acts 2 uh, chapter 2 verse number 7 hallelujah it says in the last day god says i will pour out my spirit and all people and your sons and your daughters will prophesy and your young men will see visions Oh God, I need me some young people up in here. Oh, I'm banking for my young people to wake up. Hallelujah, I'm banking for them. I'm, I'm pushing for them. They've got to get this. They've got to get this. They've got to get this. Even if we drop the ball, we can't allow them to drop the ball because our young people, they, they, they need a vision. They need a vision. Come on, somebody. When they align themselves with God, they're going to have vision. I'm talking about something that's going to allow them to see their end even at their beginning and if you can see where God is taking you if you can have an expected end that is full of blessing you will wake up every day and live right and make the right decision your days will be ordered by the wisdom of God because you can see it uh, the Bible says to us in chapter 5 of 2 Corinthians verse number 7 he said that we live by faith and not come on say we live by faith and not by sight I've been preaching long so let me get done watch this God wants us to live by vision and not by sight God wants us to live by vision and not 
by sight. I'm gonna make a couple of bold statements. I want you to get your pen ready and write this down. It's, I think about it today all day long, all week long. Grab a hold of this. Listen to this and hold this. Listen. The enemy of vision is sight. The enemy of vision is sight. Many people are stuck, hallelujah, with your vision because you've been depending on your sight. And so when you look at your life, when you look at your story, when you look at your circumstance, you can't do nothing. You'll never be nothing. Uh, you look about how much I have, where I come from, hallelujah, and you begin to speak against your vision because your sight is telling you something that is contrary. I wish I had me somebody to preach to up in here, up in here. Your vision is greater than your sight. See, brothers and sisters, sight is a function of the eyes, but vision is a function of the heart. Sight is a function of the eyes, but vision is a function of the heart. That's why people can get up and keep moving and keep going, and you wonder how they keep going because they've got something written on their heart. Hallelujah. When you look at the circumstances, when you look at them and look at where they are, you don't can't imagine where they are going, but keep watching. If they have something that is greater in their heart, give them time. I tell you, for anybody who's got a vision, it's unstoppable. It's just a matter of time. Come on, somebody, that you're going to see what God placed in your heart is going to come forth. Woo! your sight affects your vision but God did not call us to live by sight hallelujah he called us to live by vision listen to me I'm going to get done watch this never never write this down never trust your sight over your vision never trust your sight over your vision. I don't care who you are. Vision shows you what could be. Sight show you what is. Vision shows you what could be. And sight show you what is. The reason why some of you are struggling, the reason why some of you will struggle is because you're walking by your sight. Sight is an excuse. I'm sick and tired of people telling me about what is. And I'm more interested in what is in your heart. Because what it is, what's in your heart is possible. Because the Bible says a man gift will make way for him. Amen? But he's got to work it, for by the sweat of his bro, he shall eat bread. This is a work, work your vision season. Amen? For those of you listening by radio, if this ministry has been a blessing to you, if it means anything to you, you must understand it cost. It costs us to operate. It costs us light and equipment and all that stuff to broadcast and do all the things. And, and the way that we do it is with your generous giving. Maybe you have never given before. Maybe you have given stingily. You have not given your best. But he said today, Pastor, I want to partner because I believe in what you're doing. So if you're a cash app user, it's the dollar sign new season WC. The dollar sign new season W and C, like worship center. If you're using Zelle, it's 954-536-1821. 954-536-1821. And then for those of you who want to use a debit or credit card, 
It's easy for you to just jump on to newseasonwc.com. That's our website, newseasonwc.com. You can go there and you can use your card. Just go to give. It's really easy. Amen. Some of you have been giving a hundred and said, Pastor, I want to put a seed of a thousand dollars today. If you're writing to us, we're located at 4660 North University Drive. 4660 North University Drive. In the city of Lauder Hill, 33319 is our zip code. If you'd like to send us a physical gift.